Hey guys, Will here. So the world as we know it has kind of been turned upside down over the past couple of years specifically. And I keep having people ask me, hey, how do I get myself to a basic level of competency in general preparedness, all right? And I don't want to use the terms prepping specifically or survival or any of those things because it brings like weird vibes connotation to mind right like it brings to mind like when you say like survivalism what do you think about right you think about some like weird dude probably with a beard probably with a little bit of a gut sitting in the woods somewhere with like 25 different guns and like a bunch of mres and stuff like that's not what we're talking about at all um but i have had a lot of people come to me again over the past i don't know two three years specifically since the pandemic and ask me about turning yourself into somebody who's really prepared who really has the mindset and the skill set to survive a lot of dangerous situations to take care of their family through a lot of dangerous situations really to become a sheepdog like my little friend over here and I think this picture is very fitting because look at this little guy. He is guarding all of these sheep. Look at these sheep. There's white ones. There's brown ones. There's darker brown ones. There's even black ones. He's not guarding any specific type of sheep. He's guarding them all, right? And that's kind of what we strive. And that's what a message that we stand for here at Gutter Fighting Secrets is doing the right thing and protecting your fellow human being, right? Standing up for what is good, standing up for what is right, and specifically taking care of you and yours. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Joe um, hit me up in my live chat the other day. We did a special 9-11 live stream, and uh, we got into various topics, and one of them kind of being preparedness and you know preparing your, your mental mindset for various disasters that have and could happen in the future. So Joe asked me if I had any tips for him is where he could start from, from a very generalized point of view, as far as having a preparedness mindset. Now, as you guys know, I've been preparing and training and um, really living in this world for over a decade now. I've gone through a lot of pretty serious training and at this point, I never will call myself an expert because, again, you're never an expert in anything. The minute that you say that you're an expert in something, well, maybe you should shut them up, right? But with that being said, I do have a pretty good idea of where you should probably start and ultimately where you should strive to go. So I broke it down this list into a few separate categories, hard skills, soft skills. We'll talk about what that means in a second here. Also, kind of more beginner skills and beginning-oriented skills and then more advanced courses and training that you can undergo if you're a highly motivated individual. Now, before we get into <clears throat> hard skills, soft skills, I want to give you a quick caveat. Please get yourself healthy and get into physical shape. Because if you're healthy and you're in good physical condition, everything else becomes easier. One of the things that I've learned over the years is how to learn. Going through all of this high speed shit and everything that I've done, learning how to learn is one of the more important parts of being able to absorb information rapidly, internalize it, thusly making it useful for you. The better physical shape I got in, the easier it was for me to learn, concentrate, and internalize and remember all of this information. When I stopped snacking on pizza and junk food all the time and drinking sugar and all that it got easier for me to remember stuff got easier for me to learn and concentrate the better physical condition your body is in the stronger you are the better cardio you have the more of an asset you're going to be to yourself and everyone else around you as well <clears throat> i think we all know this by now having gone through the pandemic a lot of us gained weight during the pandemic it's not something you would necessarily think of but it can be kind of a stagnant thing, right? Sitting around, sheltering in place, that type of thing. It can be a stagnant type of situation. So the better physical shape you are to begin with going into that, the more room you've got to have a few extra pounds come on 
or whatever. But also, if you're able to run, if you're able to sprint, if you're able to lift up heavier objects or even lift people up, right? Whether that's for uh, offensive or defensive situation or just lift up somebody to rescue them, put them over your shoulders and carry them out of a place. That's all really important. So I'm not going to harp on it too much, but a good diet and good physical fitness level is probably where I would initially start. But with everything else, all right, so let's jump into it. Now, <clears throat> the first things that I want you to start thinking about is getting your mindset in more of a preparedness type of mind frame, if that makes any sense. That's not too much of a conundrum. I really want you to start looking at um, basically how to be self-sufficient for between one to six months, something like that. You don't have to go crazy and start filling your basement with like cans and cans of food and like jugs of water and stuff like this. But I want you to think about it this way, is that if something were to ever happen to our supply lines, and we know now that that can absolutely happen with little warning, we want you to be able to hold on for a little while, right? And we have on Gutter Fighting Secrets, on the YouTube channel, we've got a whole series about prepping, okay? And I did a very good job with those videos. It's taken a lot of years and a lot of knowledge and put it into a very simple, basic kind of A to B to Z step process that we can think about as far as what stuff do we need. <clears throat> Typically, I say you need knowledge, not stuff. If you have the knowledge, you will be able to get stuff and make what stuff you already have work. But there is some stuff that we do need to have, um, like some basic provisions of food, like some basic, you know, gallons of water or whatever, some beans, bullets, and band-aids, so to speak, uh, that will that will be necessary. Unfortunately, you can't eat knowledge. So you do need to have some stuff to uh, to snack on. And we're going to tell you in these videos, these uh, these prepping 101 videos, I think it was like three or four. And it's all in a playlist and I'll put the link below. Um, we'll tell you how to kind of rotate them out. And, you know, every every few few months, six months or so, kind of inspect them and make sure that your stuff's still good. That's a big thing that, you know, I found is that you buy a bunch of cans of food and you buy stuff that you like. Again, don't buy stuff that you don't normally eat. Don't buy spam. If you don't eat spam, don't buy spam because you're not going to want to eat it when the time comes. Like you're going to have to, you're going to have to eat this stuff like for a normal diet. So please, like buy stuff that you enjoy eating that's also fairly healthy um, that you can store. But you're going to have to check it every now and again to make sure that, hey, if it's going to expire soon, let me eat this for dinner tonight or over the coming couple of weeks and I'll purchase some new stuff, right? So learning how to do all that stuff as far as, you know, very basic prepping is a very good idea. And again, check out our videos on that stuff. So learn kind of like, hey, maybe I should pick up some radios or maybe I should pick up some, you know, chargers that I don't need the power in my house for, like things like that. Um, what kind of cans of food should I buy and not buy in this and that? Those are the very basics, all right? And again, like lean towards getting a six-month supply to a three-month supply to maybe even just a month, depending on your budget and the space you have available. Like I live in an apartment, so to have six-month supply of food and water is ridiculous. But do I have like a month of, you know, some cans I can freaking eat if it if it boils down to it? Like I I, I try, you know, and that's all we can do is try. So now after that, after we've learned like the very basics of like prepping and again, like a radio, do I, do, what do I, do I need some kind of encrypted radio? Well, no, but you just need to like be aware that if you are using radios like those, you know, press to talk, like open source radios, be aware that there might be bad guys listening to that, right? So how do we talk on those radios, but not give away important information to bad guys who might be listening and watching us? And that's not some paranoid way of thinking here. That's just straight up like criminals do that. Um, criminals will always case the place. They will always watch you. Even if it's only for a minute before they strike, 
they're always going to be watching to see, is this person going to put up a fight? Am I going to be able to easily take this objective? Or should I wait and move on to somebody who's easier? Criminals don't want a challenge. They want somebody that's not going to put up too much of a fight, right? And that's, we'll go into this with the soft skills, but just be aware that you really want to make it difficult for somebody if they want to, if they want to try to hurt you, you want to make it as difficult for them as possible. Become a hard target. I always say that, I always use that phrase, but that's what it means. Become a hard target. Become somebody that they would just assume not bother with you because they know it's going to be difficult. They'd rather bother with somebody who doesn't think about this stuff at all. Now, let's go into some of the hard skills that we want to acquire. Um, the first thing that I want you to think about is medical training. Now, if you know how to save a life, you're ahead of the flock, you're ahead of the herd, right? Out of all of the crazy training I've ever been through, um, and I've got years and years and years of hard skills training, my EMT skills are probably some of the stuff that I use the most. I want you to think about getting a basic CPR AED course. For those of you who don't know, an AED is a defibrillator, all right? It's the pads that you hook up to someone's chest. If they've gone into cardiac arrest, you shock them and hopefully start their heart again. It's really important, um, I think, in my personal opinion, to look out, like we said, look out for your fellow man, look out for your fellow human being, know how to save a life. And you can get free CPR AED training courses out there. They're around. You can find them. People will literally do this for free because it's invaluable resource. The more of us that we have out there that are capable of keeping somebody alive long enough for the emergency services to get there, hey, listen, saving a life is freaking cool. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you do. Being able to, trust me, guys, being able to say that, hey, listen, this person is still alive because I stepped in when they needed my help and I was able to keep them alive long enough to get them to a damn hospital, that is a good, good feeling. Not to mention the fact that, Lord forbid, anybody close to you, you want to be able to keep them alive long enough to get them that help that they need. The next thing I want you to think about doing is getting a basic first aid course. Now, again, you can find basic first aid training for cheap and even for free. We can go on YouTube and get like hour, hour and a half, two hour long basic first aid course training for free. And I'll link some of these th down below. You can literally find this stuff for free on YouTube. It's great. And if you put the time and effort into learning these skills, again, not only will they and can they save your personal life so that you can protect the flock even longer, they will also help save the flock. And they will help save your friends, your family, in a dire situation, or even just in everyday life, getting somebody the help they need long enough, keeping them alive and stable long enough to get them to that advanced care, that could be the difference between them healing up and recovering or them having a lasting ailment, right? Knowing how to look after somebody who's had a fall so they don't make their back injury worse, right? And have lifelong complications from that that's well worth the time and effort and energy. Now, the next thing that we can do is get a stop the bleed course um, or bleeding control training, something like that. And when I was on the fire department, I was a fireman for eight years and I was on our active shooter uh, response task force. We went through a lot of this. And again, in the combat training that I went through, we did this as well. But if you are going to be around any situations where your firearms are involved, knives, things like that, any combative situation, then learning how to put a chest seal on somebody and save their life that way, learning how to apply a tourniquet, learning when to apply a tourniquet and when not to apply a tourniquet can also be very helpful. Because again, if it's going to be a little while before they can get medical attention, I'm saying like a day or two, you don't necessarily want to put a tourniquet on them unless you seriously have to. So knowing these things is important. So the order of operations, the order of learning that I would personally recommend. First, CPR AED course. Second, basic first aid course. Third, stop the bleed course. Now, if we really want to go into it, you can get your first responder certification. 
You don't need to be a first responder to get this certification. It's a step below EMT. You don't have to do the clinicals. You don't have to do um, the state or whatever test or federal test. You can you don't have to recertify every couple of years. I think you might actually with that course. I think there is a recert, but don't worry about it. If you're just doing it for yourself and your family, you don't need to worry about that. Or you're gonna learn how to give someone oxygen, learn how to you know give someone nitroglycerin, like learn a lot of very valuable skills. Now that's depending on where you do it, how you do it. It can be expensive. It can take a lot of time and effort and energy. I think some of them are like three months long, like a couple nights a week or something like that. But again, if you really wanted to jump into it, that is available for you as well. Not to mention EMT. If you actually join some, a lot of towns throughout the United States have volunteer EMS and fire. So you can literally, if you feel like it, if you feel like giving that commitment to your community, you can join that and they'll train you for free. And you'll get a lot of hands-on skills and keep your skills sharp. They'll also make sure that you're, you know, that you're recertifying and all of that. And again, it's free. So you can't beat that. Plus you're giving back to your community. Now, what is that? I remember my first day of the fire Academy. They all asked, uh, the instructor asked us, you know, why are you here? And some of the guys were like, yo, I want to give back to my community. And they, <laughs> the instructor, this old grizzled fireman, he goes, what the hell does that even mean? What has your community ever given you? And, uh, you know, it made you stop and think like, well, that is a cliche. Um, but really what it more is about is you and having the skills to protect your, your, yourself and your family. Um, and joining a, a, a volunteer thing where there's literally like not much commitment as far as like, you don't need, I think different, uh, different volunteer companies do different things, but usually like if you're busy, you're busy, you don't have to go. Right. Whereas if you actually like made it your career, you have to be at the firehouse for you know, a certain number of days a week or whatever, but that is a great way of doing it. And like I said, you'll learn a lot and get a lot of great training that way. Now let's move on to something that everybody likes. Like whenever anybody thinks about getting um, hard skills and preparing themselves, they think of what? They think of combat. They think of shooting, which is probably like less than 1% of the time will you ever need to fall back on any of these types of like Rambo, Jason Bourne type skills. But um, it is in there and it is on the list. So I will talk about it so you can do it the right way. Now, the first thing I want you to think about is, you know, getting yourself a basic firearms course, learn a handgun, all right? Because when it comes down to it, a handgun is highly concealable. Generally speaking, that's what you're going to need. That's what you're going to want. Um, learn how to conceal a handgun and learn how to draw from the holster from a concealed position. You may live in a state where owning a firearm, specifically carrying a firearm, is illegal. You may be in a situation where even owning a uh, firearm is illegal. I always obey all local, state, and federal laws, but if you need a GAT, you need a GAT. Learn how to use it correctly. Learn how to load and unload it. Learn how to hit a tail target with it. But more importantly, um, learn how to select a good concealed holster for yourself so that you're not printing. It's not obvious that you have it. You know, the wearing the right type of shirt or whatever is like very important. So learn that stuff. You don't need to dive into it like your fucking undercover cop here, but you simply need to be aware of it, right? Um, and then learn how to fight from cover. So learn how to draw a pistol from a concealed position and learn the difference between cover and concealment. And then learn basically, very basically, like how to take cover, where to take cover in the right way, and how to fight from around that cover. And I think that that will take you a long way. Now, what we could do for our basic firearms courses or our defensive firearms type training, Google range, um, they usually wet at different ranges will have the option for you to take like a defensive firearms course. Or, you know, if you are living in a concealed carry state, there are like an eight hour concealed carry course, right, that you can take. I don't think you need to do it. You know, you don't need to go through like crazy operator courses. You need a couple of days of training from a professional uh, that will teach you the basics of defensive firearms. You also should learn how to use a shotgun. Now, shotguns are one of those firearms that even in Europe where they're not allowed to have guns, you'll find shotguns. 
it's a very counterintuitive weapon. If you if you aren't familiar with it, it can fucking confuse you. So I highly recommend that you get com comfortable and competent using a uh, a shotgun. Learn a 12 gauge shotgun, and then that the rest will follow. But again, you don't need to put too much time and effort into it, but learn how to become comfortable and confident with it. Learn how to load it, unload it. Um, learn the very basics of it. And then, of course, with your rifle stuff, learn how to operate an AR, learn how to operate an AK, the two most common forms of rifle, and you're good. And again, with these, with these firearms trainings, I want to make sure that you're being more defensive about it, right? Don't just stand in front of a target and shoot and say, all right, I'm good now, because no gunfight... Very few gunfights, I think, are won by standing in front of somebody and just pointing the trigger, right? Like, or pulling the trigger. You need to know how to move to cover and fight from there. Now, let's go on and talk about hand-to-hand -hand training, which I think, arguably, is even more important than um, firearms training. Because in a lot of situations, you won't have a firearm. You might not have a firearm. Or you might not want to use that firearm right like a lot of situations you don't if you use a firearm against somebody who's unarmed who might be threatening you there's a likelihood that you will end up in jail for using that firearm right i have my concealed carry permit and they know like we all know all the guys who have that look if somebody's unarmed and they're like aggressing on you and you pull out your gun and put two in their chest Going to fucking jail, buddy. That's like, it's manslaughter, if not murder, right? So be very diligent about that. But learn how to defend yourself with your hands. And again, I travel a lot. Europe, Asia, overseas in general. You're not able to carry a firearm. You're not even able to carry a knife, generally speaking. So learn how to use improvised weapons like a pen, like a flashlight. But what would I recommend for hand-to-hand -hand combat training? Do MMA, jujitsu and boxing or Muay Thai. If you can get six months of legitimate MMA training, you will be well, well ahead of the pack. I always say, if I had to go into some type of physical altercation with a couple of guys, right, like by my side, give me one or two guys with six months of MMA training versus like a guy with his black belt in any traditional martial art any day of the week. Because if you're used to actually dealing with physical violence, if you're used to actually fighting and choking somebody and rolling around and slipping punches and stuff like that, well, then you already know how to deal with physical violence. And if it works on the mats, if it works in the cage against another seriously trained opponent, well, you bet your ass it'll work on the street. With a quick caveat, I want you to learn um, how to use a knife. And I want you to do that properly so that somebody doesn't just grab it and stab you with your own knife. We can help you with that. Go to fightingsecrets.com. We've got an offensive knife course. We'll teach you exactly how to use a folding knife or a fixed blade knife the right way. Uh, I would also like you to get familiar with how to deal with taking away a weapon away from somebody. A stick, a bat, a knife, a gun. All right. And you don't need to get too wrapped up, but take some take some Krav Maga training or whatever it is, right? Go to a reputable source. If you need any help finding something around you, just plop in the comments here below or hit me up at go to fighting secrets at gmail.com all right and i'll help you find somewhere that's reputable because there's nothing worse than bad training but i would absolutely do some mma or jiu-jitsu and boxing and combine that with a little bit of street fighting stuff and again all of our com combative courses are all geared towards street fighting combative application self-preservation self-defense and offensive fighting style. So go to fightingsecrets.com. Check out our hand-to-hand -hand combative training. They're all online, all right? But it's seriously good stuff. We've got ground fighting. We've got stand-up fighting. We've got takedowns. We've got everything that you need. Um, weapons, disarms, all of it's on there. And again, it's my stuff, so I put my full stamp of approval on it. Let's move on to more hard skills that we might need to acquire. Driving. Driving is super important. Now, I said of all the crazy training that I've ever been through, Medical was one of the things that's always come in handy. The other thing has been driving, right? I've done gone through a lot of um, overseas protection training, um, hostile environment courses, things like that, where we learn evasive driving. I was also, like I 
like I said, a first responder where I went through um, driving for that. And I, I drove, I drove, <laughs> put it like that. I drove fast with the lights and everything. And it was fun. And um, it taught me a lot about driving. One of the things that I know for certain is that if you're going to be driving fast, do it the right way. Learn how to do it the right way. Now, even going beyond just, you know, like learning how to do J turns and all that, because guys, I can tell you this, practically speaking, J turns are not that, they're not all they're cracked up to be. They're just not, it, it takes a long time to program that in and it takes a lot of continued refreshing training to be able to even do that stuff. There's better ways of getting away from somebody than doing a J turn, right? But um, I'm not even necessarily talking about that evasive stuff. I'm simply talking about learning how to drive fast safely. There is a right way and a wrong way to do it. Learn how to do it the right way. That way, not only are you and everyone inside your vehicle safer, but everyone outside of your vehicle, all the cars and people around you are also going to be a lot safer because you're more likely to kill somebody going really fast in your car than any other time. It's really important to learn how to do it the right way. Now, again, if you need any help, finding a course or whatever, keep in mind, they can be expensive, all right? A two-day driving course can be pretty costly. But again, this is life insurance. We are talking about this in the live stream. This is, ins this is life insurance. You pay for life insurance. You pay for fire insurance. You pay for whatever flood insurance. This is no different. You need to know this stuff. You need to know it. The time to learn it is now. So if you need any help selecting a good driving course, again, you can do it over the weekend. You, you might have to travel for it. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to tell you it's completely easy, but is it worth it? 100%. So a basic driving course would be really good. Now, a CQB, solo CQB course. Again, I mentioned that this firearm stuff is not uh, at the top of our list here. But in a bad situation, home invasion, Something has happened and you need to, you know, Lord forbid, late at night, they come in your house, learn how to fight from your house, right? Learn how to do a two, do, do a, do a two day solo CQB course. I mean, simple, right? Like, don't get, don't, don't think about CQB as like I'm going in with a team. I'm going to kick the door in and go in. You'll never need to know that stuff. I almost guarantee you, like, you'll never need to do a raid. Like, if you do, well, like, don't. <laughs> You're going to get killed. Don't do that. It, doing raids and anything like that takes a long, long, long time of training with a team that you've been consistently training with those guys for a long time. It take, There's a lot that goes into it, guys. But if you um, are a firearms owner, are you concerned about possibly having to fight from inside your house? Orion training courses are a great resource. I'll link them down below. OTG, they are specifically geared towards teaching civilians like us the um, skills that we need to, you know, basically clear rooms inside our house and stuff like this. So we don't like shoot our kid or like, you know, our wife pops out of nowhere and like, Lord forbid, right? So we, we need to know how to do this safely. But again, doing a two day course, three day course, or a couple of different one day courses throughout the year will be a, a, a good. It'll be well worth it. It'll be well worth it. Um, but don't put, don't put more effort into shooting and like hard skills training than you are your other areas, right? Medical training, stuff like that. Learning how to read a roadmap, right? Learning how to read body language and negotiate and communicate with people the right way is way more important. We're about to get into that with our soft skills. Before we do, um, another hard skill that I would think about, and these courses incorporate everything we just talked about. So executive protection, which is bodyguarding. You might say, well, like, why do I need to know how to be bodyguard? Like, I'm not, I'm not doing that. Like, no, like, listen, hear me out. <clears throat> Gone through a lot of these training courses. A good executive protection or close protection training course could be anywhere from a couple of days to a couple of weeks, depending on how much time and resources you have to put into this. But again, if you do want to go gung-ho about this stuff, 
it'll teach you medical, it'll teach you driving, it'll teach you surveillance detection, counter surveillance. It'll teach you how to, you know, grab someone and move them quickly out of the danger zone and off the X. It'll teach you how to put them in the car the right way and then jump in the car yourself and drive off. Like literally everything that you would strive to learn over probably a few years, you will learn in a matter of a few, a week to a few weeks in an executive protection training course. Finding the right one is important. Hit me up if you have any questions. I can steer you in the right direction because some of them are more geared towards working in armed security and working as an executive protection professional. And others are more applicable for the civilian sheepdog or father or protector um, kind of that we're talking about here. But if you think about it like this, your wife, children, they're your VIPs, right? You're responsible. You're the sheep though. And you're responsible for protecting these sheep, <clears throat> learning how to protect them in the right way, in the efficient way. Executive protection is an art. Close protection is an art. It's been refined and honed over many, many centuries into many years. And specifically out of you know Afghanistan and Iraq, it's been honed to a real, a real skill that is able to be rapidly taught. So if you ever really want to go through it and go through like some pinnacle type training, get yourself into a good um, closed protection course. And like, it's, like I said, it'll teach you everything from hard skills to soft skills, route analysis, route mapping, all of that radio skills. Like that's what you really, really want. And again, learning how to do it as one person or two people. I think a lot of people, a lot of guys specifically have like this, fantasy about like like the world goes to crap and then like we link up and we start our own militia and like that's just not the way it's probably going to go you know i remember i do a lot of training at one shepherd which is small unit tactics and um i remember during the pandemic i was talking with a couple of my buddies one of them who was an instructor is and was an instructor there and he said you know i've gone through like all of this small unit tactic stuff. I've learned how to do ambushes and raids and fire team rushes and support by fire. And like I've learned all of this like ranger type stuff and I'm an instructor in it, but I don't have a unit. It's me and I'm looking after my family. I wish I had concentrated more on <clears throat> developing my own personal skill sets as far as operating in a one man team or two man team. And that's what these EP courses will do for you. Now, if you do want to go and learn about, you know, go all in and learn how to operate inside of a team and, you know, do things like bounding and survival outside and learn how to use your poncho as a tarp and like all of that military stuff. Well, One Shepherd, the number one shepherd.com is a resource for you. If you want to learn how to become a civilian soldier citizen soldier well it's one shepherd is the place that you want to go and then the lastly you you could do some two-man cqb uh you could learn if you are maybe you are an older guy and you've got you know kind of an older son and the both of you want to learn how to operate as a team hey do a, a again ott orion orion training group will teach you know we'll teach you two-man cqb and there's other schools out there that are reputable as well uh orion is one of the ones that i've personally gone through and that i endorse and recommend wholeheartedly but um that is an option as well and again don't go crazy on the defensive offensive skills but learn them and be proficient at them <clears throat> guys let's jump into soft skills soft skills arguably can be more important than hard skills what do I mean by soft skills? Well, things like negotiation, how to read body language, how to communicate. You know, when I was living during the pandemic, I was living um, at my parents' farmhouse. I moved back in with them. They they asked me to move back in. They were frightened about what was going on. They said, well, Will, after everything that you've gone through, we'd like you to come live with us. So I brought my girlfriend, Jen, at the time, and it was... Uh, Three couples living under one roof, three adult couples living under one roof, right? My parents, my brother and his girlfriend at the time and my girlfriend at the time. Let me tell you this. Learning how to operate with group dynamics 
and human dynamics is extremely important. <clears throat> you know, in any of these bad situations, <clears throat> the more people that we have with us, the better, generally, but that can cause a lot of really nasty dynamics to happen. So learning things like negotiation, reading a book on negotiation, sales even, um, human psychology, how to deal with groups, leadership, anything that you can read about leadership, get your hands on it, read it. Again, a reader is a leader. You've heard that cliche before, but it's very true. Um, learn and learn and learn and learn about human psychology. <clears throat> the more, the better, honestly. Now, another soft skill that we want to learn is surveillance detection. Now, I alluded to this earlier. We don't need to go crazy about it. Okay, I worked for a private investigator doing surveillance for a while, a number of them actually. And um, I've gone through a lot of pretty serious surveillance training overseas and here domestically. I'll tell you this, if you want to learn how to detect surveillance, learn basically how to do surveillance. Now, the good thing is you don't have to quit your job and become a PI or go work for the FBI to learn surveillance. Type it into YouTube. Get familiar with some basic concepts on how surveillance is done. That way you will be able to recognize it if it's being done to you. And I said earlier, typically criminals will surveil you before they strike. That could be as simple as looking you up and down to see, can this guy fight? Does he maybe have a weapon? Or it could be as complex as I would like to kidnap this person's daughter or son to exploit them financially or worse. So... <clears throat> In that case, the surveillance will be crude, but it will more likely be prolonged, right? Anytime a criminal or any entity wants to strike you, they will more than likely do some surveillance first. So recognize how to recognize that. Learn how to pick up on and recognize that and learn some ways to mitigate that risk as well. Now, we have a program called Travel Safety Tips. That's on gutterfightingsecrets.com. We also have Travel Safety 2.0, where we discuss in depth and in detail surveillance detection, surveillance avoid, avoidance, and surveillance awareness. We go into really a, a lot of depth and detail about that stuff. But you can also find a lot of free resources, again, here on YouTube, invaluable freaking platform that it is, although it kind of sucks sometimes with you know, they definitely censor, but you can feel um, really confident knowing that there's a lot of great information out there. So learn about that stuff. Now, another thing that I would recommend that you learn is read a map. Read, basically, learn how to basically read a roadmap, right? Like figure out where you are on that roadmap and learn how to read it because most people don't these days. Like unless you're old, <laughs> you probably have never even looked at a roadmap. Everyone uses their GPS these days. Well, what happens if your GPS is down? You're just screwed. Learn how to read a roadmap and then learn how to read a topo map as well, topographical map. You know, learn some very basics about navigation and it will serve you well. So, besides from all of those, you know, soft skills, um, another language would be handy. It's not necessary especially if you're only going to stay here in the States. But if you did learn some Spanish or some French, it could take you a long way. And cer certainly if you're going to be going overseas, you know, learn some, learning another language can never hurt. And not to mention, it keeps your mindset sharp, keeps your mind sharp. But those are some things that I would recommend. Some of the hard skills, that's more fun stuff. Some of the soft skills, a leader is a reader. All right, read as much as you possibly can. Watch as much educational stuff as you possibly can. And I think that if you take what is useful from what I'm saying, discard what is useless, you know, much of it is useful, but take what is useful from what I'm saying, apply it. I think that you will become um, a really competent sheepdog and just in general, better able and better prepared to deal with anything that should happen. Like I said, we don't know much these days. All we do know is it gets progressively crazier and crazier. So taking some time to
to learn these skills is a very good idea. And I applaud you for actually taking the time to want to better yourself and learning these skills. And I, I, I sincerely hope that if you have any questions, that you will put them in the comments or even get in touch with me personally, gutterfightingsecrets at gmail.com. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna make myself available for you guys. All right. If you have any questions, if you need any help at all, look, the more sheepdogs that we have out there, the safer all of us are. And that's our whole mission here at Gutter Fighting Secrets is to help prepare and train the good guys so the bad guys, the wolves, have a tougher time being fucking wolves, right? We need these fierce guys out there to protect the wolf from the wolves. And the more the better. So thanks for what you guys do. I appreciate your time. I appreciate you watching all the way to the end. Hey, give us a thumbs up. Give us a, a share, right? Share this video if you know anyone that it would help. Drive us up in the algorithm. Hey, I appreciate it. Um, comment down below. And go to fightingsecrets.com is our website. We've got a lot of really great training material on there, as well as some survival supplies that are still left. I don't know what is left, but we've sold out of most of it. But there's some good stuff and some good prices over there. So check it out, gutterfightingsecrets.com. Guys, thank you so much. And until next time, please remember that you are your first and last line of defense. And I'll see you in the next video, Mother Flowers. Cheers.